keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. So, hi guys, welcome to What's in the Box. Today, it's time for more bolt action. It is. And yes. We have the German Grenadier Squad in their winter or in their winter gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this was part of a whole release that Warlord did just before the, uh, the end of 2015, mm -hmm. where they decided the Germans and the American armies would get a winter set. I'm very happy with this. Absolutely, and I have a fairly large American winter army. I know. You're still together. trying to paint. I'm still trying to paint. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, Justin, get that I have to do that. Crack the whip, get to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we have a box, then with a blister. Mm hmm Which, again, I'm going to praise Warlord for doing because it's far nicer to look at a box than it is just to look at a blister hanging yeah. on a wall. You get a fair lump of metal in this. Yes, we have ten figures per box. Uh-huh. Uh, they are mostly, f well, for the most part, they are one-piece models except for their heads. Ah, well, uh, which is handy for us because that means we don't have to build very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll grab our first one here, mm -hmm. and it's this guy with an MP44 mm -hmm. and a massive great coat on him. We'll yeah, color up as if he's walking forward into a stiff wind. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of these guys are wearing at this point of the war, this winter uh, 44 to 45. Mm -hmm. They are wearing whatever they can get. Right. So uh, I'll assume it's just. It's cold, we haven't been supplied. Yes, um, on the box it does say uh, these guys are suitable for mid-war, which is 42-43, and late-war 44-45. Mm -hmm. So 42-43 would definitely encompass Leningrad, Stalingrad on the Russian front. Uh, late 44-45, that's all sort of, you know, the European uh, Battle of the Bulge, post-Battle of the Bulge into the fight into Germany. Yeah. There's a nice dynamism to these models. Dynamism. Yes, they're actually looking as if they're moving. Exactly, yes. They have uh, a lot of nice poses in there. Mm. Um, there's a lot of equipment hanging off of them. It's all laid out in different forms. There's, a, there's variations between people wearing the, the M43 ski cap, the regular helmet, then they have the, the helmet covers. Mm -hmm. um, they're wearing scarves. Some of them are wearing parkas. Some of them are wearing the great coats, as you pointed out. Yeah. Uh, some have so it really was just so on. lay your hands on some warm clothes and gents. Winter is coming. Yes, if you have it, you were going to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, they also had to consider that when they were fighting in the snow, they needed a bit of snow camouflage. So yeah. you would find a lot of the times that those helmet covers and mm -hmm. some of the white clothing they're wearing is either a reversible parka right. or a bed sheet that's been torn up and wrapped <laughs> around the helmet. Well, why not? But yeah, if it, it was white, it worked. So. Well, I mean, like, whenever it comes to winter camouflage, wearing a bit of white, fair enough. But how would you paint these? Um, because uh, I imagine the white wouldn't stay white for very long. No, the white wouldn't. <laughs> as soon as they put it on and fell on the ground, like they they are no longer crisp yeah. white anymore. So like there would be a lot of there's a lot of good opportunity for weathering in here. Yeah. Um, probably if you're wanting to paint just white and then weather it down, maybe a little bit of soft tone wash and mm. so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, uh, there is a, a absolute ton of different poses in there mm -hmm. as you just saw, and then you were saying about different head types. Yep. So if I bring these in, yep. uh, you do get 10. One of them has popped off this particular sprue. Well, they are, t I believe they are duplicates of the same thing. Yeah, so these are two. Okay. So there's a complete one to show okay, instead. Okay, so I'll bring in the complete one. Yep. You've got your standard helmets, your ski caps, and your ones with the wrappings on them. Yep. So grandma's best bed sheets have yes. been cut up. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, these are... Uh, they are advertised as grenadiers, but you can use them as you know, regular regular Wehrmacht. regular Wehrmacht, or if you really want to do your SS units or anything like that for mm -hmm. Battle of the Bulge, no, they're I'll all suitable. The uniform didn't really change that much between them all. Not when they were wearing their winter kit, because the winter kit was more or less standard throughout. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, all right. Well, uh, tell you what, we'll move on. Yes. We'll get them built up, mm -hmm. and we'll show everyone whenever they're built with a little bit of primer on them. Yeah. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. 
Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of Warhub. Take command of elves, dwarves, and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastofwar.com. Okay, we're back with the Winter German Grenadiers. Mm -hmm. How did you find the build? Because you didn't let me have these ones. <laughs> no, Germans are mine. Mm -hmm. All, All mine. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a two-part kit, so there's nothing complicated about it. You know, yep. clean up the flash. Uh, one thing I do have a habit of doing, if we go to the close camera, uh, you see the base tab? Yeah. I always take a file to the bottom of it and just give it a quick scratch, just to give it a better, uh, better bond. Mm -hmm. uh, but this little guy, I believe, goes like this for our MG42. Yeah. Now, um, you want to bring us back to the front camera there for a sec, Justin? Yeah. There's one thing I want to say to Warlord. Okay. And it's not a criticism. Okay. But on the box, you show the, the MG team on an oval base. Uh, and we didn't have an oval base in the box. That might have just been the, the artist painting that did that? Possibly. But it would be nice to actually have that biscuit, that oval biscuit base in uh, with See, I, I disagree. Why? I think it's better to have them on the two individual bases for gaming because when one but dies, they're, but they're they a team. Move them. Yeah, they're a team within the unit. Yeah. But, but once one of them dies, the mm -hmm. other guy who just still has his rifle, you know, drops the ammo for the MG42, stands up with his rifle ready to go. Yes, but technically, uh, he would get, you know, this, the, the guy kneeling down would be replaced by someone else. Yeah. So you would just take someone else out of the squad. Unless it's the exceptional damage, in which case they're going to take out your MG42. Yes, but then... you have to remove your MG42 guy, and the guy that's left over has to stand up with his rifle again. So having them both on the one, I don't think would work. I'm right. Thomas Blow? I'm yes, right. yes and no. Yes and no. I would just put, if one guy was dead, I would just put a wound marker on the base. Oh, well, you could do that. It could get confusing, though. Well, that's. Okay, comments below. What, what way would you do it? Yeah. Let's have a look at the rest of our squad. Cause mm -hmm. We have, what, five of them built there? Yeah, so I we... built five because there's five cool ones. So we've got our yep. MCO, using uh -huh. out the clip on his MP44. Yep. We've got one guy chucking a grenade. Mm -hmm. And we have our other guy with his. MP44. Mm -hmm. He's charging. Of course he's charging. He's charging all the time. Charging like a lunatic yes. because you know, I have a fully automatic weapon in war. Because the NCO behind you has told you to do it for the fatherland. <laughs> of course. It's a nice kit on mm. the table. The German Grenadiers are one of the best units I've found mm -hmm. for any German army simply because you have good flexibility yep. and a good selection of weapons. If you go for the veteran ones, it suddenly becomes a firefighting unit, stick yep. in a half track run away to the other side of the board where something's going wrong, jump out with fully automatic weapons, blasting everywhere. Yeah. It still doesn't really stand up to the, the Russian PPSH conscript squads there. Uh, yeah, but the the Russian forces is just, how many men can I cram down your throat? That's true. Uh, we, we have seen Andy do that a few times and just be like, yeah. look at this, look at the amount of bullets I'm throwing at you. Yeah. One of them is bound to hit. Yeah. Well, you... Well, I'm not going to say that line. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, that's the, the Winter German Grenadier squad. I like them. Drop us a comment below. Am I right about having them on two or one bases? Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastsofwar.com. Enter into the dangerous dungeons of myth as a mighty hero and stand against the darkness. Visit the Myth Hub on beastsofwar.com and begin your story.